Sir, if you would, uh, to mention your name for the record, please make sure, not only you, but everyone, make sure that you fill out a witness form, and um, please proceed. Good afternoon, Senator, members of the committee. My name is Philip Todd. I'm a resident of Callaway County, Missouri, and I'm here to speak in favor of this bill. We hear in the media about uh, firearms being used for uh, uh, bad intentions, you know, madmen getting a hold of guns and, and creating uh, havoc and, and murder and things like that. What we don't hear about is the thousands of people on a daily basis who are saved because they have the ability to own firearms and carry firearms or carry concealed or have uh, have firearms at their, their disposal. And the problem with the media is that they they tend to uh, sensationalize the bad things, the, the one of a million incident that happens that's unfortunate, but they never document the number of people who have been saved by the possession of firearms. One of the uh, provisions in this bill is about allowing armed teachers in our schools, and I believe that's a good, fair provision. What we do not want to do is expand the areas of gun-free zones that allow these criminals that get a hold of guns, the madmen that get a hold of a gun, the mental patient that gets a hold of a gun, to be able to go in and operate uh, within the confines of a gun-free zone unopposed and unchallenged because they can do a lot of damage and a lot of harm in just a matter of a few very short minutes before law enforcement can, can arrive. I believe that's good. We want to protect our children and that's, that's one of the best things that I can see that we can do is protecting our children. Uh, by allowing the fire, use of firearms, or allowing the possession and to have resource officers in schools who are in possession of, of, of firearms. Uh, I believe that's really all I have to say. I just want to say thank you for bringing this bill up, and uh, we appreciate all you do, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, and do we have questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. I, I will just mention we're doing a lot of housekeeping today because it's our first meeting. Flash photography is never, never, never okay in the Senate. Not in parent rooms, not in the chamber. Never, 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 never flash photography. Uh, the, let's have someone that would speak in opposition of the bill. <coughs> or it be for, for informational purposes after the okay. okay. uh, No one to speak in opposition? Okay, we'll go ahead and take an, an informational purposes only. And if you would, same thing, uh, fill out a witness form. Please introduce yourself to the committee and proceed. Good afternoon, committee. Uh, my name is Brad Bates. I'm with the Missouri Osteopathic uh, Physicians. Um, I, 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 see, I see where you're coming from on some of the, some of the issues. I, I think what Senator Schaaf said echoes a lot of our feelings of our members is that as a physician, there's certain things and pertinent information that you should be able to document into your charts or perhaps not document, just depending on your uh, medical training and years of, of service. Um, it could be a situation of perhaps, perhaps where you have um, a family member that may be suffering from emotional distress or going through a tough time in their life. That's the type of information that, it, that should a physician, knowing that patient through a good patient-physician relationship and years of, of, of uh, treating that person may find concern and may, may have a need to put that down in their charts. And, and we think a physician uh, should have the right to be able to document anything that they, they find uh, important to the cause and also not document anything that they, they don't feel should be in the chart. So. Uh, that's my presentation for uh, informational purposes only, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Very good. Sounds sounds like you might be a little more leaning to the against category, but we'll we'll put you down as information. Oh, only. That, okay, you're right. So um, let me let me just kind of sure. go over a couple of these things sure. with you um, now, and and I don't ask this flippantly because this bill has, as you probably know, had several iterations. Right? Absolutely. Do you have the most recent? copy of the bill? Um, I, I believe so, from following the, the questions that Senator Shaw, Senator Sylvia had asked. Okay. So, so, one of the things that you mentioned that I wholeheartedly agree with you on is that 
um, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, I'm just paraphrasing, but I think you had said something to the effect of, you know, there would be certain things that uh, physicians would want to have the liberty to put in the chart, et cetera, et cetera, and that if there was some sort of, um, um, I, you said there was some sort of, perhaps there would be something that they, they wouldn't want to document. Right, but also I think you had said something about if there was some sort of a situation in the home that they were aware of. Yes, and, and that was just hypothetical. Perhaps there could be some family stress. Sure, uh, and so I just, I just want to tell you, as the author of the bill, um, and, and referencing the exact wording of the bill, this bill would not in any way, shape, or form stop a physician from making documentation under that scenario because the physician uh, would be within their scope of practice and they would believe that it was necessary or medically indicated. So in that particular case, and I, and, and I know you're, you're probably just thinking of that as one, I just, I just want you to know that the particular case that you present uh, would, not, would not be affected by the wording of this bill. And, and, and you're referencing page 10? Uh, page 10. Line 12. Um, actually, we'd probably go down to starting at 14, but really, but really 16 is where it kicks into full gear. A patient status as an owner of a firearm and documenting any discussion about medical contraindications of access to firearms if such inquiry or documentation is necessitated or medically indicated, which in, in the particular case that you had mentioned um, would certainly be necessary and medically indicated, which would have that position very much within this law. Okay. You do note it. Um, as, as for the questions of, of Senator Shaw, um, page 10, line, uh, no, line 8, no health care professional license in the state may document or otherwise disclose information. I think, you know, and, and again, we're for informational purposes and we're willing to discuss, but I think the, the may document, I think it is, is probably an issue for a, a physician that for whatever reason, and I don't pretend, you know, to, to have the training that for whatever reason may wish to document that in their chart. Sure, and I, and, and I, 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 you know, you represent the industry and so I want you, part of the reason Excellent. I'm interacting with you this way is because I want you to take this message back to right. them, okay? okay. And that is that it is, it is absolutely common and customary in law that you would begin to describe something as we've done here on line eight, no healthcare professional license in this state may document or otherwise disclose information gathered, yada, 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 okay? So you start with that, but then you also follow that up in, in later sentences by disclosing or offering reasons why it in other words, provisions that would allow them to do the very thing that had been mentioned earlier, right? And that is exactly what we've done in this bill. Even though that first wording, if I was a physician, I would probably have some uh, cause for pause on that first sentence, no healthcare professional license in this state uh, may document or otherwise disclose information, right? As soon as I would read that as a physician, I would say, wait a minute, these people are telling me I can't do this. But then as I read further down, I see that the law makes provision for the physician to be able to do that very thing as long as the physician believes that it is medically indicated or, ne or necessary. So this is something that is done probably in the majority of laws where it says that a person can or cannot do something. It, it might start out by saying a person cannot do X, Y, Z, da, 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 unless well, this is the case. Would, and I appreciate that. Would a child acting out perhaps, you know, I mean, there's so many what if situations sure. um, that, that physicians are, are uh, presented with. Would, where is that arbitrary line? Is it drawn separately with each case? Or is it, you know, a line in the sand at any point? Right. Well, and I don't, I don't pretend to know okay. what physicians know. Um, right. In my private life, I represent physicians as a, as a um, as a consultant, so I work with physicians all the time. I know that one of the things that physicians, unfortunately, have to deal with is understanding the law. Whether it's HIPAA law, whether it's whatever, physicians, unfortunately, in this litigious society, have to understand the law. And so if a physician, I, I know that physicians are smart enough to understand this because they've made it through medical school, and so if a physician has the real intent to simply do what physicians do all the time, and that is to stay within their professional scope and
to do what is necessary or medically indicated, they are never, ever going to have a problem with this law. Now, having said that, I will just tell you that I am absolutely willing to continue to wordsmith this and wordsmith this and try to try to figure out something that's going to that's going to make our medical community happy. Um, and, 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 and we've evidenced that so far. And, and to your point, I mean, it, it, in the years in dealing with the physicians, I have yet to meet a physician that is not absolutely committed to the welfare and the health of, of every patient that they treat. And just because, yes, they're expected to know the laws. There are laws made every day on the federal level, on the state level, that there's only one of them to go around 24 hours a day and seven days a week. And I think Senator Schaff would probably agree that uh, you could probably spend half your time just trying to keep up with the new law changes that are made. And, you know, I would hate for a physician to be penalized for something that were put into effect. And as you stated, you know, something happened, they ask a simple question and they just document it because it was important to them to follow up with or for whatever reason. And next thing you know, they broke the law. But and I, I, I contend to you that, that the wording of this law does not represent that problem. And so, but I also tell you that I'm open-minded to figuring out a solution that might be more palatable. Um, but I will just tell, whether it's you or anybody else, whether it's my good colleague here, I will tell you this wording alleviates your concern. And, um, and we'll just, we'll just I, think, I think Senator Schaff has some questions for you as well. Being that I disagree with that last statement. Okay, I would like you to consider the case of a, a person who goes in to see a psychiatrist and says, you know, Doc, I'm thinking about killing myself. And the psychiatrist says, do you own any weapons? And he says, no. And that makes you feel better because you're a psychiatrist. And so you think to yourself, I would like to write into my medical record, the patient said he does not own any weapons. Now, if you look at subsection 2, and it says, you may not document anything about the status of such patient as an owner of the firearm. That would seem to indicate that you could not write, my patient says that he does not own a firearm. But now, according to my colleague, if you look down at subsection 3, that would make it so that, in this case, you could document that because, after all, it is indicated by the healthcare professional scope of practice and so on. Except for, if you look at the wording of subsection 3, nothing in this section shall be construed as prohibiting or otherwise restricting a healthcare professional from inquiring about a patient's status, which you did, or as an owner of a firearm, which you did, and then it says that you can document any discussion about medical contraindications to firearms. But that's not what you're wanting to document. You're not wanting to document that you had a discussion about medical contraindication of access to firearms. You're wanting to document that the patient said he does not have a firearm. That is not the same as what those words say. You agree with me? I would agree. Thank you. I bet we'll figure out a way to fix that. <laughs> All right, next person to, um, I'm sorry, we're back to the flip-flopping here, so we're going to go to, in, you know what, I'm sorry, Senator Lemke, if you would wait just a second. Do we have anyone that wishes to speak in favor of the bill who is not of a profession that requires them to be in this building all the time? In other words, do we have regular folk that drove from some distance to be here? Okay, you were going to be a me too, right? Okay, come, come forward. If you would state your name for the record, yes. and do you have a witness form? Uh, I would do it. Please be sure to leave. Okay, proceed. Thank you, Senator Nevis and members of the General Laws Committee. My name is Laura Hausladen, and I'm from Crawford County. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, this is something that I really um, expect my state legislators to interpose for me and protect my rights, um, the ones that are encoded not only in the U.S. Constitution, but the state constitutions. Um, just an example, my friend's 32-year-old son 
was working in New York City and was held up at gunpoint. He thought quickly and uh, went to the nearest ATM and took out $200, um, which satisfied um, the, you know, the robber. But um, he was seconds from being killed, and he was rendered completely defenseless by New York City's direct plug in gun laws and her prohibitions, I should say. And um, we don't want Missouri to, you know, become New York City. So um, we really would appreciate. I know there's many people who can't be here today who feel very strongly about this issue, and um, they they want you to interpose for them. On this. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. And do we have, just one second? Do we have any questions for this witness? All right, thank you for your testimony, and I think we're back to um, those who would speak for informational purposes only. Please come forward. State your name on the record, and please leave a witness form. Uh, my name is Mo McCullough. I'm a registered lobbyist for the Missouri Psychiatric Association. I'll be very brief because of the discussion that's been going on. Uh, we would like to say that, that and I'm not a psychiatrist, but we think that some of the questions that Dr. Schaub has brought up shows that there may be some tweaking need to be done or some clarifying, and we just want to be part of that discussion. And I, I will tell you as the sponsor and chairman of this committee that we are very open-minded to that. Do we have questions for this witness? See none. Thank you. Now we're back to those who would speak in favor, and we're even going to begin allowing people that work in the building a lot to uh, have their time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Jim Lemke, and I'm testifying as a citizen, and I drove all the way from St. Louis, Missouri, to do so. Um, you know, I, would, uh, in 50 seconds. I would ask uh, this, this committee uh, to err on the side of your constituents, to err on the side of fellow Missourians that have elected you to be the stewards of our Missouri Constitution and the U.S. Constitution and that oath that you took to protect life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and the gain of their own industry. Um, also, uh, as our founding fathers uh, so often alluded to, uh, were those inalienable rights that every human being has, and certainly that right uh, to protect oneself and property and family is one of those rights. So I would ask, as you craft this piece of legislation, I understand that uh, there are concerns from different professional groups, and uh, those concerns may be warranted. But work through those. But err on the side of the citizens. Err on the side of those that you are elected to serve in that this is one of our most sacred rights. And I can't think of anything more valuable then for you as a state legislature, as the state senate, to stand up for those rights and push back when necessary, when our federal agent may be stepping over the line. So I encourage you and I appreciate uh, your work on this piece of legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. And uh, do we have questions for this witness? See none? Thank you. And did you leave a witness form? I know sometimes private citizens forget to do that. Um, <laughs> And do we have, let's see, I think we're back to speaking for informational purposes only. And then do we have, is there one more for, how many more in favor? Two? All right, thank you. State your name. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Pat Strader, representing Missouri Academy of Family Physicians. I want to say I want to thank the chairman for working on this bill. I mean, we were here last year with some concerns. And I would just echo what the other witnesses have said and some of the questions that Dr. Schott brought up. I know my physicians would probably have the same questions. I would say in 95% of the cases, maybe it's a not an issue, but in those 5% where they're uncertain as to what to do, it could cause definite problems. Another question I would have is on number three, lines 19 and 20, where it says, uh, indicated by the healthcare professional scope of practice and such inquiry documentation does not violate any other state or federal law. And I agree, physicians should know what the law is. My concern is that it's so complicated that some of them will fall into this, this web and not, not intentionally. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I'm, you're talking about lines 19 and 20? Right. Okay. 
Um, so it has to be within the scope, and of course, it has to you know not violate any state law. And I would think that no physician would do that intentionally, just concerned that the language is fairly complicated. Okay. Would would something to the effect of um, uh, knowingly operating outside of the scope of practice, or I'm not an attorney. I I would just have to. You know, well, I have every confidence that my good colleague uh, to the right here is going to be really working with me a lot, and he's a he's a, a, a very learned man with a tremendous vocabulary, and I think he's going to be able to help us figure out. Yes, and he's he, he's a family physician. He understands the issues that my physicians face every day. Very good. Thank you for your testimony. Do we have questions for this witness? All right, seeing none. Uh, next person to speak in favor of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, Abel Messer with Missouri Family Network. I will be great for respect for the committee's time. Um, I would draw your attention very quickly. First of all, I'd like to commend the, uh, the good chairman on the amount of work that he's done to revamp the bill, to take a serious look at all of the issues uh, that a lot of folks have had with the legislation and to see what we can do to make it better. Uh, very quickly, changes on page four, changes to knowingly. There's a very substantial change. Um, we very much appreciate it. Also, I would draw your attention to page 5 uh, on line uh, 129, dealing with sovereign immunity. We have to do something to deal with bureaucracies and agencies of the government which Come seek to, to operate with complete impunity. All of the issues, almost all of the issues in this legislation, in some way, shape, or form, goes back and addresses what do we do, how do we keep government agencies accountable when they choose to do whatever they want to do and disregard what our Constitution grants us as rights, freedoms, and privileges. We saw this as demonstrated last year dealing with the Department of Revenue scandal, and this seeks to address that specifically with regards to our Second Amendment rights and freedoms, and we appreciate the good senator for bringing that forward. Thank you for your testimony. Do we have questions for this witness? Thank you, and I think we have one final person? Or are you going to wait till next week? Okay. Uh, anyone that may have driven from a distance, we do have about four minutes remaining. We can have a committee hearing while they're making that announcement. We just can't continue once they've uh, once they've gaveled into the Senate. So does anyone else wish to speak in favor or in opposition or for informational purposes only at this point? Very good. Well, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, we are not adjourning. We are simply uh, going into recess until next week. We will take the bill up again. Thank you.